Listen, I hate to break it to you, but if you want to live off campus in an apartment next year and you've barely started or you haven't started looking yet, you're late. Apartments in Chapel Hill go like that. So if you want a solid place to stay next year, I got you with all the essentials for every apartment in this guide. Okay, obviously I can't cover every single apartment in Chapel Hill because there are dozens, but all of the ones I chose in this video, I think about 70-80% of UNC students that live in apartments live in these. So we're going to start out with the main furnished apartments and then move into the unfurnished complexes. And for each apartment, I'm going to be going through the typical rent price per person, the amenities that it has, its distance from campus and the main transportation methods used to get to classes, the overall comfort and cleanliness of the apartment, and finally what its parking situation is. So the timestamps are below for each apartment, but I recommend watching the whole video if you are still in the early stages of looking. We're going to kick things off with Union Chapel Hill. As it stands right now, this is the newest apartment building in Chapel Hill, with the first year that it was used being 2020 to 2021. It's located up on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and it consists of two squarish buildings with three floors each. The most typical floor plan is the four bed, four bath, D1 floor plan, which you can see here, and the three bed, three bath, uh, two story floor plan, which you can see here. And for that four bed, four bath, rent per person per month is gonna be about $1,050. Obviously with that rent getting incrementally higher as you have less people in the apartment, so a one bed, one bath is gonna cost you like almost 12, 1300, I think. And that includes all utilities except for energy and maybe one other thing. So I think in total, that'll probably be like 50 extra bucks per person per month. I mentioned all of these first ones are furnished, but real quick, I'm gonna go through what exactly that means. So in the living room, that means there's gonna be a two or three seat couch and one chair, a coffee table, a TV stand. Usually they provide the TV too, and a small dining table for the kitchen. And in your bedroom, it's gonna include like a dresser, a full XL bed frame, a mattress, and a desk, probably not too big of a desk, but a desk to do work on. The complex itself has a courtyard in the middle of both buildings, and it's pretty decked out in amenities. A fire pit, a decent sized pool, a sand volleyball court, I believe there's rooftop access to, and the gym. Union's gym is probably the best of any apartment in Chapel Hill. It's pretty big, and it has everything that you need. So given all of that, given that you have your own bathroom, given that it is the newest apartment complex in Chapel Hill right now, I'm gonna rank cleanliness and comfort a nine out of 10 for Union. As far as its location, it's about a 25 minute walk to get from Union to main campus and a 15 minute walk to get to Franklin Street. But that's definitely not the main way people get down because Union has its own shuttle. It's one of two apartments in Chapel Hill that has its own shuttle and basically that just goes straight from the apartment complex and it goes down through campus, makes multiple stops on the way down. It goes all the way down to the business school. And I think it runs semi-frequently like every 20 to 30 minutes. So if you need to go to class, that is probably your best option, assuming you don't have a parking spot on campus. The NS bus also runs down MLK, which is a good option if you miss the shuttle or something like that. But speaking of parking, it is a lot and not easy to come by at Union. First of all, you have to enter a lottery to even get a spot, but I think most people do. But when you do, it's going to be about $140 for a surface lot, which is just outside of the apartment, or $160, they might even be upping that to like $180 or something next year for a spot in Union's parking deck. Parking deck is pretty large, it's five stories and it goes right into the apartment, so you don't need to walk outside and then back inside, which is really nice. But yeah, that is really expensive. So if you wanna keep a car, definitely add that 150 to $200 onto your monthly rent to get a more accurate estimate of what the price is gonna be. Now moving a little bit down MLK, basically the same exact location, right under Union, you have Lark Chapel Hill. I have a lot to say about this one because I lived in it last year. So I'm gonna to toss it back to Siobhan like five months ago to tell you about it. In terms of the building itself, the lobby is super nice. It's modern, uh, there's a few places to do work, there's a lounge, and right next to it is a gym, which I find like good enough, especially for just to have it right in your apartment. There's everything you need, uh, just try to avoid going there when it's super crowded. There's also a pool, which I still have yet to use, I'm a little sad I didn't get to use it, but it's a pretty good sized pool. There's a volleyball net, a basketball court, the basketball court's kind of like, it's not good, but it's there. And yeah, uh, the elevators break down like half the time at least on the wing that I'm in. But overall, I haven't had too many issues with the building itself, uh, only really with the people in the building. Like some people just leave their dog poop on the stairs for whatever reason. Again, by far the most common floor plan here is the four bedroom, four bathroom. 
Here's what the floor plan looks like. It's all in one floor and very symmetrical. Most of them do have a small balcony on the outside, which is cool. Now the rent on paper is $979 per month per person, but usually throughout the year, at least this early, they'll have deals that'll dock that down a little bit. Like we signed at a great point where we were able to get it for $850 per person. Again, this includes everything except your energy bill. It's also furnished, although the furniture, albeit, is a little bit less quality than Union's, but that's not that big of a deal. In terms of distance from campus, very similar to Union. They are the second apartment that has a shuttle. You've probably seen the Lark shuttle driving around UNC. Um, it has one route that just goes straight from Lark to student stores, and it has one route that does the full campus loop down to the B school and back up. Parking is, again, on the steep side, but a little bit less than Union. I had to pay 120 bucks per month to keep my car on site at Lark, but yeah, it's just a bullet that you're gonna have to bite because there's not really any getting around that. You can get it for slightly cheaper if you go next door to university apartments and apply for a parking spot there. It's like 500 a semester, but to have your car anywhere near, you're gonna have to pay. Down on Rosemary Street now, right under Franklin, shortbread. Now you might be looking at the website and seeing that it says $765 per person for a four bed, four bath and saying like that's by far the best deal so far. Why don't more people get it? Well, not so fast. If you look a little deeper, you'll see that that rate is for a shared room in a four bed, four bath. I mean, essentially if everyone in the apartment had the same thing, that's an eight person apartment in a four bed, four bath. And I don't know about you, but after moving out of a dorm, I'm not trying to stay in the same room as someone else, especially these like smaller apartment style rooms. That's not even the worst part though. That rate is for a room with no windows. If you want a room with a window, that'll be like $825. Want your own private room with a window? $1135. That sounds more like Chapel Hill rent to me. <laughs> But Shortbread is a pretty nice apartment building. It has a very modern vibe. Amenities like a gym, a rooftop terrace, patio, study rooms, all the same stuff. But what really sells it is the location being right on Rosemary Street. Basically walking distance to anywhere on Franklin Street and even to campus if you want. Parking is also in assigned spaces like Lark is. I don't know if I mentioned that Lark, you have like an assigned parking spot. And it's gonna cost you $115 a month for an outdoor parking spot and $150 a month for a spot in their like two-story deck that they have below the apartment. So for what it's worth, Shortbread has a very common reputation for being the like sorority girl apartment. And from my experience, whenever I've gone near it, it's true, but take that for what you will. Moving a little west on Rosemary, you hit Warehouse. The most common floor plan here, unlike the others where it's four bed, four bath, this one is four bed, two bath, so you're gonna have to share a bathroom with someone. But these are going to run you about, I actually have no idea because they don't list on their website and a lot of apartments do this, it's super annoying. So let me go run and ask them real quick. Is the most common unit the four bed, two bath? Yes. Okay. And that's uh, about, um, I would say between a thousand and eleven. I would say roughly around eleven hundred dollars. Okay. okay. Eleven hundred a month without your own bathroom. I don't know. But again, the location really sells this one. It's even closer to Franklin and campus than Shortbread is. It has very similar amenities to the rest of them. I'm not going to run through all of them again, but here's the list on their website. But at least every apartment here has a window, right? Bedrooms have windows? Yes. Okay. Some of them face the atrium, some of them face the outside. Okay. okay, it doesn't sound too bad, but what's the atrium you might ask? Well, Warehouse is named quite literally because it looks like a warehouse. The rooms itself are very rustic, I don't know if that's the right word, but like most of them have exposed brick next to the beds and in the living room as well. And the inside of the complex itself looks like this. So yeah, you can see where it gets its name. And the fact that some rooms windows look out to this, I don't know how I feel about. Yeah, I know some people might like that and again, location is amazing. Parking is going to be how much? Ranges 115 to 150. So basically the same exact thing as Warehouse, they have a small lot outside and a deck underneath. Because it's a little older and because of the brick and sharing a bathroom, I'm going to dock the cleanliness rating to a 7 out of 10 for this one. The next most common furnished apartment, this one is back on MLK and it is all the way up, not a 5 minute walk from Larkin Union but a 5 minute drive, which is pretty far from campus and that's obviously its main downside, 
but this is Chapel Ridge Apartments. The most common floor plan here is the is the four bed, four baths, or back to private bathrooms, and that'll run you about 730 per month per person, which is, you know, a much better deal than every single apartment we've looked at so far. And this one, there is no catch. You're not sharing a room. It is actually four bed, four bath but you're obviously sacrificing the location for it. You're also sacrificing a bit of cleanliness because it is an older apartment complex. It's a lot more of a traditional one with just separate units. Furniture's probably not as new. I've, I've heard of roaches being more of an issue than usual here, but I've also heard of some people not really having any problems like that. To get to classes, most people probably have a parking permit on campus, so they just drive or the NS also does run all the way up there. It's just gonna take you a lot longer to get down. Parking is free, which is nice, so you can have your car no matter what. Amenities, once again, volleyball, pool, small gym. I think that might be about it. I'll put anything else here. I have also heard of bad stories from a couple friends of the ownership of this apartment and just being rude and not helpful at all. So I know that is a common thing with apartment complexes, but I've heard it more here than others. So take that for what you will. This is also the first apartment in this video so far that does not only lease to students, so there might be non-students living there as well. Before we end off the furnish section, I'm gonna give a quick honorable mention to Courtyard Lofts. This is a less popular one, but it is on Franklin Street, so I feel like it's worth the mention. It's all the way west near like Heavenly Buffaloes and McDonald's. And the base units do come unfurnished, but they do have furnished options, and I think they'll run about 800 to 850 a month. Uh, I think the most common being a three bed, two bath layout. It's one of the older ones, so it's definitely not the cleanest. It's a very average looking apartment. The ceiling is exposed. Amenities are pretty basic, but if you stay here, it's probably for the slightly lower price and the great location of being on Franklin Street. Now let's get into the unfurnished apartments of Chapel Hill. And technically there are more of these, but I'm only gonna say a few here because his most tend to concentrate in the three that I'm gonna mention. But in reality, there's a bunch of them all around Chapel Hill just with not that many students staying at each of them, but in total it adds up. But yeah, basically unfurnished just means you have your apartment, you have your basic bathroom stuff, you have your appliances, and that's about it. Everything else you have to bring from home, order it, whatever. The first one is a very common apartment, and that is on MLK Junior Boulevard, right above Union Mill Creek condominiums. It's a little unique in that it's a complex of a bunch of different condos together into like eight or nine different buildings and each unit is individually owned so technically you're leasing it all through the Mill Creek website but in reality you're leasing it through an individual owner which doesn't change too much but it's something to take note of because each apartment might look slightly different than the others in general most Mill Creek apartments are either garden style which is on the bottom floor it's just one floor a living room a kitchen and then four rooms and then on the top floors it'll be two stories living room and kitchen on the bottom and four bedrooms on the top and all of those have two bathrooms each so the majority of Mill Creek is four bed two bath because of that rent ranges but I'd say on average it's about 575 per person per month some less some more there aren't many amenities because it's not a building obviously it's just a small complex of condos but there is a pool there are some rundown tennis courts that people still use and trash is included, but all the other utilities you're gonna have to cover yourself, unlike most of the furnished ones. Transportation to campus is mostly done through the NS bus line or just walking or by driving if you have a permit and parking is free. So another apartment where, where every single person has the option to get a permit for free. The only thing is Mill Creek is notorious for its extremely tight parking spaces and I've gone there many times because I have a lot of friends that live there and I can attest to this. Some of the spots are just like so narrow, but again, it's free. And next up, we've got the big one down on Franklin Street in the best location of any apartment I'm gonna say in this video, Carolina Square. Carolina Square is probably the most luxurious apartment at UNC, not just because of its location, but because it is relatively new. It has a ton of features. It has some rooms with balconies that overlook Franklin Street, which is awesome. So if you're purely looking for the best apartment location-wise, here you go. But that is not going to come cheap at all. I actually went by when I was getting my B-roll, talked to the lady for a little bit, and she gave me this, which has all of the information about prices and stuff. The most typical room is a three bed, three bath. So they only lease by the unit, not by the person like other places. So a three bed, three bath is going to run you anywhere between 3,700 to 4,700 per unit, which means you're looking at an average about 1,350 per person per month. 
and that is just the base cost. And keep in mind, this is mostly unfurnished, so you're gonna still have to bring basic furniture in, which is expensive in and of itself. I think they might have furnished options, and that might be what the 4700 is, but yeah, that is by far the most expensive apartment in Chapel Hill. Uh, obviously for good reason, I guess, because of the location, but still I don't think anything justifies that price. Still cheap compared to New York, I guess, though. <laughs> but, I mean, you get that location, you can walk to class, Franklin, Rosemary, wherever. Um, if you want to keep your car, it is 175 a month, and only one spot is guaranteed per unit, and the rest of the people have to enter a lottery. It's in the deck that's right next to it, but still, 175 a month on top of that for parking is just absurd. Amenities are great. It has all the typical ones. The pool overlooks Franklin Street, and we also have a sky deck, whatever that is. And just look at these fees, too. That's nearly like $1,000 in fees up front, and then another, like, 50 plus in fees per month so very expensive but if you got the money this is definitely the best option location wise these next ones i'm gonna lump into a couple categories the first is the other unfurnished apartments on mlk and the main ones here are stratford hills timber hollow shadowwood there might be one other that i'm blanking on but these are all very similar to one another. They're on MLK between where Union is and where Chapel Ridge is. So not really walkable to campus, but they are all on the less expensive side. You're looking at around 500 to 600 per month for these. So I think are four bed, two bath, or three bed, two bath. They are going to be some of your older buildings. So the appliances and things like that are not gonna be great quality. I, again, think you're living with non-students in all these apartments, except maybe Stratford is mostly students because I do have a few friends that live there. Parking is free and unassigned spaces for all of these. And if you don't care that much about having a nice place and you're just looking for some place to stay with a decent budget, these will probably do that for you. The best out of those three, I'd probably say is Stratford Hills, but all worth looking into if this is kind of the area that you're looking for. Next category is the same type of apartments, but on South Campus. So we're talking below campus, below 54 and in that Carborough Jones Ferry area. Some of the most common ones here are Ridgewood, Laurel Ridge, and Kingswood. There's definitely a few more, but most of these some students do live at, but a lot of non-students live here too. Um, anywhere between 450 to 600 a month, same kind of floor plans. Uh, not walkable to campus. There's a couple bus routes that go down there, but less so than MLK. You're usually going to have to drive. And most of my friends that have lived in these places just looked really late and ended up with something there. Or even some on Howell Street. I think Howell Street ones are a little nicer, but not a great location unless you're in the business school. But yeah, those are the main unfurnished apartments at UNC. I know I, know I kind of went rapid fire on those last ones, but there's not really that many differentiating factors between them. Amenities across all of them are very similar not most of them don't have a pool don't have courts or anything like that it's just your basic maintenance walking trail stuff like that but for now that is most of the main apartments at chapel hill like i said probably 80 percent of students live in any of the ones i just mentioned there are a select few that i didn't mention that i'm going to gloss over real quick right now uh, first of all rams village obviously is an on-campus apartment so that's why i didn't mention it but it is furnished four bed two bath very dormy style but still a bit more private and that'll all cost you, I think, in the seven or eight hundreds a month. But obviously that comes with the great benefit of a amazing location being on campus. The next ones are apartments like University Apartments, Link Apartments. And the reason I didn't talk about these is because they are only one or two bed. And I know most undergrads, at least maybe grad students, this is more common for, but most undergrads are looking for more than two beds in their apartments. So but I think they'll run you in about nine hundreds. And then finally, the apartments still on MLK but even higher up, like 1701, Chapel Hill North, and Caraway Village. Most of these are like nice apartments, and they'll be very reasonably priced, but it is pretty unorthodox for students to live there just because of how far they are, and you basically have to drive to campus, and it'll be like almost 15 minutes to get there. Um, but yeah, if you have questions about anything I mentioned, anything I didn't mention, because as I said, they're definitely more, uh, let me know. I've done a lot of research when I was looking myself and for friends and all of that. Happy to help, but yeah, happy searching. It's a struggle sometimes, but you'll find a place you're going to like. And uh, hope this helped. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.